With the launch of Season 6 and the start of the very first expansion pack that Diablo 4 has ever released, The Vessel of Hatred, everything that we know is changing. A brand new class, a brand new leveling system, and a brand new endgame. We're going to start with the basics today. We're going to go over the leveling process. I have a spreadsheet for you with everything that you're going to need to know to get started and get you off on the right track. Let's hop into the leveling sheet and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to approach leveling this season. So leveling in Season 6 is going to change. Put together a nice little leveling guide here on how I'm going to approach Season 6. It's a little bit different from last season. So we're going to start off with the new difficulty settings. World Tier 1, 2, 3, 4 is all gone. We're now going to be faced with Normal, Hard, Expert, or Penitent. This is just before we get into our Torment. Torment 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is going to cover all the way up through those Torment levels. I highly suggest starting in Normal. They have increased the difficulty of the game as a whole. And they've decreased our attack. So, which is actually a very good change. The game pacing is going to be a lot different now. The reason why you want to start here is because it's difficult. And if you look at Penitent right here, this is available at level 1. Penitent had the difficulty that was changed. It used to be the difficulty of Torment 1. I went into Torment 1 on the PTR, and I put together a build. The only thing I had was just regular legendaries, no ancestrals, one temper on each, four master working. I went out into Helltides, and I was shocked at how slow things died in Helltides. So that is what Penitent is going to feel like now. So if you're level 1, and you select Penitent, and you run out into the world and try and kill something, good luck. So I highly suggest, starting here, once you get your class skill, then you can move up to hard. So this way, you can actually be able to function a little bit, but it's not definitely necessary. The second thing that you're going to do when you log in, you don't have to go to the wardrobe anymore. They added this nice little button here. Everybody thought it was going to be an additional armory when they first got the little glimpse of it. But what it is, it's your wardrobe. You can activate your pet. You can change all of your uh, cosmetics right there. And you know what they say. You cannot do good if you don't look good. So unlock your pet right here. The next thing that you're going to do, watch out for the mercenary quest. You're going to look for it to pop up where your quests are on the right-hand side. When you see it, do it. It is going to be incredibly important. The mercenaries are actually very, very strong. Not only do you get your first mercenary, but you also get a reinforcement. So you can get one skill from one of the other mercenaries that you have. So this is going to be a huge, huge bonus this season. When we had the Seneschal in Season 3, I loved having that. So this is going to be a lot of fun to do right here. Number four, start with your seasonal quest. You're going to want to do this until you obtain the seething opals. So these are elixirs. They look like this right here. This is going to be the seasonal quest that's going to be available at the start of season six. The reason is when you get these opals, you get a 15% increase bonus, and that's going to stack with your other elixirs, and it's going to uh, stack with incense as well. You also are going to start gaining reputation. So you want to make sure that you have one of these running at all times throughout the entire game. If you get to a point where you don't have any more elixirs, you're going to stop what you're doing. You're going to go find one of the realm walkers. It's going to be on your map. They're up pretty much all the time. And you do a realm walker because you want this to be running at all times. It's incredibly important. So you're going to start your main campaign as soon as you are done with your seasonal campaign and you unlock these opals. The main campaign is enough basically to carry you almost all the way to 60. So this is how you're going to be your main source of leveling for your first character. Your first character, you start the campaign. As soon as you hit level 15, we're going to start doing what we're going to call gear checks. You're going to do your class quest. And what your gear checks are is going to be right here. This is what the new legendary items are going to look like. You won't have any legendaries at level 15. But what you're going to be looking for is you're going to equip all of your new gear. Any tempers that you can put on, put them on then. You're going to add any gems, any runes that you found. You're going to add any new aspects when you get higher levels. And then your master working, when that's available, you're going to master work too. You're going to craft new elixirs, craft incense, and then if this is a good spot to go get more opal elixirs. 
now with the legendary gear, you'll now actually be able to go up to Master Working 8 and you'll have two tempers on just regular legendary. This is a change from the PTR and actually a really great change that they made. At this point here, at level 15, you're going to switch to hard difficulty if you're comfortable doing it. So if you're playing a spirit born, at this point, it's a really good spot to go and do your renown because you have to do renown in the new Nahunter region. You're also going to start unlocking the aspects that you need because the dungeons count as renown and they also will give you aspects when you complete them. So if we hop in game, you bring up your Codex of Power, you're going to find the aspects that you haven't unlocked, which will be for all of your spirit born ones. Where it says pin on map, you're going to do exactly what it says here. You click whatever system you're playing on, wherever it says pin on map, you're going to click that. And when you bring up your map now, it actually gives you a path all the way down to the dungeon that you need to unlock that. Even if it's in the fog, because the new area is going to have fog because we haven't explored it yet, you can still pull up your Codex of Power, go to the aspect, and click on it, and it'll take you right to the dungeon that you need. It helps you explore, it helps you unlock aspects, and also is going to give you points towards your renowned system. So this is something that you want to be doing when you're leveling on your spirit born character. The next thing that we're going to do, if you are running through, plan out your interactive map. I have a link here below. So you're going to pull up this interactive map. It's going to show you exactly where all of the renowned stuff is. You're going to use that as you level and run through the campaign to hit little key points. You can get your Tennis of Akarat, which you may be running past, but you didn't know that they're there. And instead of backtracking, you can now get those. So make sure that you use this. Take advantage if you don't mind the spoilers, right? Uh, complete the campaign. Once you've completed the campaign, more than likely will be very close to level 60. It actually gives you a ton of experience as you work through it. I've heard that it is incredible. So make sure you take your time with it on the first playthrough. After that, skip away. So if you're not level, if you're not level 60 here, what you're going to do is you're going to hop into all of the strongholds. They got nerfed, but they still give 1.25 levels per stronghold. We get three additional ones in the Nahantu region. So hop into them, do that. That is if you want to speed level. If you want to take your time and you want to make sure that you have master working materials, you want to get all your glyphs, you want to level your glyphs before you hit level 60, then you're going to use Nightmare Dungeons and Pits to get all of those materials. After your level 60, this is where you're going to prep for Torment 1. Torment 1 is not easy, so you actually have to make sure that you're prepared for this to go in. You have to have your builds online. You're going to change to Hard or Penitent Difficulty. So this way you start, each tier gives you a, just a little bit more efficiency, is how they phrased it, how the devs phrased it, because they increase the drop rates of what you want just a little bit more per level. Farm your Nightmare Dungeons for your Aspects, Master Working Materials, because the Master Working Materials now drop from Nightmare Dungeons, not the Pits. Then you're going to work on getting Glyphs from there too. Then you're going to farm the Pits for more Aspects, because stuff will drop at the very end of the bosses. They actually drop Glyphs now, which is amazing. And then you can level your Glyphs inside of the Pits. It's no longer done in Nightmare Dungeons. There's been a swap. You're going to work on updating all your Gems and all your Runes. Then you're going to clear and unlock pit level 20. This brings you into Torment 1. When you swap to Torment 1, you're going to start farming your Ancestrals from the Hordes, but you're not going to be able to just jump into the Infernal Hordes like we do now. The keys will only come from drops, so you actually have to find the keys. You cannot craft them anymore. You can't just run over here and you go right to the Occultist and then you go to craft sigils, you cannot do this anymore. This is gone. So in the new season, you're going to have to rotate between Nightmare Dungeons, Pits, and the Infernal Hordes. Infernal Hordes is going to be a great place to target farm Ancestral Uniques, though. Then you're going to continue doing all of those activities, and you're going to farm your boss maps, and then you're going to target farm. So I have all of the new Spiritborn drops here. These are all of the bosses and what they're going to be dropping. And then right down here is a great article from Wowhead that gives you every single unique that you want to target farm from bosses. Duriel and Indariel now have double the drop rate of all of the other bosses. This was that, it was that way in season two, I believe, and three. 
then they changed it and now it's back so this is going to be the leveling guide here i'm going to have it attached to a build guide for the spirit born and i'll have this available in discord too so if you guys are in discord and you want to take a look at this the it will be in discord i'll also have it in the description of this live video too throughout the season i'm going to be updating this document I already have runes. This is everything that I learned from the PTR. It has the cons, pros, how the runes work, some of the feedback that we wanted to see. Here are some of the rune combinations. Based on a lot of the feedback that we got from Blizzard, we had some changes to some of the runes. There were some major changes. So they have really, really strong runes. Some of the runes were just removed completely from the game. And then other ones that weren't as strong were actually buffed. So check out the runes while you're here. I'm super excited to go live at the time of the launch. I'll be here. Hopefully I will see you there. I'm live on YouTube, Twitch, X, and TikTok. So if you are on any of those platforms, stop by, say hi, catch you on the flip side.